How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a final year medical student studying in Canada. Currently rounding up our 2021 campaign for November. That's, that's the mustache. Now, all that to say that all proceeds generated from this channel, from this video and all my other videos for the month of November end up getting donated directly in support of mental health. Now, that brings us to the topic of today's video. Currently, I'm shooting this video at about 12.30 in the morning on a Friday, early Friday morning, just after midnight. This is a very busy time for final year medical students right now. We are applying to residency via the CARMS application. And I thought that it would be a great idea to have a basic, we'll call this CARMS application residency applications in Canada 101 this is kind of a first pass everything hopefully that you guys need to know if you're unfamiliar with the process of applying to residency in Canada I hope this video helps whatever you need it for now we're gonna divide this video up into different chapters feel free to skip ahead but basically general overview of residency residency is the period in time it's the training period immediately after medical school this is your earliest training as an actual doctor because you will have been finished medical school by then and usually it'll last anywhere between two and seven years in Canada, depending on what type of specialty you're going into. Now, in my case, I will be applying to family medicine. I'm going to be applying to family medicine across the board. If you've seen my video discussing how I chose my specialty, that just came out not too long ago. And that is a two-year training program at minimum. We'll get back to that in a little bit. On the other hand, you have specialties like neurosurgery, which will require a six-year residency-based training program. And then in addition, it is not uncommon in some cases for people to start off, for example, in internal medicine, realize it's not for them, then maybe try transfer to family medicine or a surgical specialty later on after their first year. Now the software, the algorithm that we use to do our matching process here in Canada is called CARMS, C-A-R-M-S, and that stands for the Canadian Residency Matching Service. I'm pretty sure. Now, what most people don't know until you actually come to the point when you're applying for residency, there are four different separate CARMS matches that happen every single year, broken down to different categories. You have the R1 match, and R1 just refers to residency one, your first year of residency, and this will be the match for anyone that just finished medical school looking to officially start residency. The second CARMS match is known as MSM, or the Medicine Subspecialty Match. This is for individuals who have already completed basic training, or you know, their training in internal medicine, medicine and are now subspecializing in either gastroenterology, cardiology, or any of the other internal medicine based subspecialties. The third CARMS match is known as the FM slash ES match. And this is family medicine slash enhanced skills match. And this is additional training after your first two years of family medicine into different areas like anesthesiology, emergency medicine, OB, or any of the other family medicine subspecialties. And finally, the fourth CARMS match is the PSM, the pediatric subspecialty match. These will be after your basic training in pediatrics, things like pediatric neurology, for example. Now, high level R1 CARMS application data as of last year, 2021, it looks like there were more than 4,000 applicants, but just in around 4,000. And the breakdown was 2,975 Canadian medical graduates, 17 American medical graduates from the States, and then 1,356 international medical graduates who actually went through and completed the CARMS application. Now, when you apply to match for residency here in Canada, there are two things that you will need. The first thing is a Canadian medical identification number. You'll need to sign up for a Physicians Apply account on their official website. The Physicians Apply is the official website for the Canadian Medical Association, how they handle uh, the matching process and, and everything from international medical graduates all the way to Canadian medical graduates. The second thing that you're gonna need is proof of residency. This is very important here in Canada. I will go ahead and put some data up on the screen right now, but for the most part, you're gonna require either proof of permanent residency here in Canada or proof of being a Canadian citizen. Now, when you are ready to apply for residency, the very first thing that you need to do is select your special and come up with a game plan. Now, one very important thing to know is that just because I'm only applying to one particular specialty, that's not how it works for everyone. And definitely some people, especially people that are applying for some of the more competitive specialties, will often back up their competitive specialty with a less competitive specialty, just so they don't go unmatched at the end of the residency application process. Now, once you have chosen your medical specialty, what you then need to do is go on the CARMS official website and look at the program descriptions for all of the different specialties. Now, this works a little bit differently than when you're applying to medical school because when you are applying to medical school there are 17 Canadian medical schools here in Canada and what you're doing is you're applying to be accepted at one of those particular schools whereas here let's say for example I went to medical school in McMaster I am not limited to doing my residency at McMaster and 
definitely you could go hypothetically to any school that you want to when it comes to being trained in a particular residency specialty at that different school. And hopefully that makes sense. Now try and keep up because here's where it gets even more complicated. You are not just applying for residency at a particular school because all of the different Canadian medical schools also have different site locations when you apply to residency. For example, if I'm applying to family medicine here in McMaster, I'm not just matching family medicine at McMaster. What I'm trying to do is match one of the 12 sites at McMaster, and that will be the site that I am stuck at for my residency training. So for example, if I wanted to go to the Hamilton family medicine program, that is one program that would need to accept me. I could get accepted at McMaster, but not end up in Hamilton and instead end up in Kitchener Waterloo. And that could cause some problems for people in some cases. Now it's important to know that here in Canada, where you match after medical school is a legally binding decision. And I use that term very sketchingly because I'm not a lawyer myself. But basically what this means is that hypothetically, for example, let's say I apply to Toronto, the University of Toronto for one program. And I also apply to the University of Saskatchewan as a backup. I really want Toronto, but I also apply here just so that I have something and I can match to in this example. Let's say I match the University of Saskatchewan for something, great program, nothing against it. But if this applicant had no intention of going to Saskatchewan, they just put it in there so that they could have a backup and then they get cold feet and they don't want to go anymore, you no longer have that option to go somewhere else. The general rule is that you only apply to the programs that you would be comfortable actually working at, otherwise you have no business in applying to those programs because it will be hard, not impossible, but hard to switch afterwards. Now the general flow when it comes to residency applications in Canada, they changed these dates recently because of the COVID pandemic. It was different only just a few years ago, but basically the CARMS system opens up in October of, of the year that you're currently in. And then you will have that time to go and look up all the different program descriptions. Basically then in December is when you are actually able to select schools and programs and do things in your actual CARMS profile. And then January 31st for this particular cycle will be the final deadline. As of February 1st, the system will lock you out and anything that is incomplete after January 31st, that's it. There are students every year that unfortunately only make it partway through their application process. And if you're even only one day late, that's it, you can't match anymore. Now, a typical family medicine applicant here in Canada is supposed to apply on average to 25 different programs all of the 25 different programs that's like broken up at the different schools. McMaster has 12 different campuses for family medicine. That will be 12 different applications that McMaster actually lets you bundle together. And you'll see there's a lot of intricacies when it comes to applying. But in summary, those will be 12 different applications for that one school. Now, here's the deal. After I have been accepted, into my first choice application for residency because we're manifesting here, guys. I will go ahead and break down my entire application for YouTube, show you guys exactly what I had and how I applied, what my application looked like. I also got to clear it, um, make sure that I'm allowed to do that here on YouTube, but that will be later on. What I want to do now, before I've had the chance to actually populate the different fields on the application, is give you a sneak peek as to what a Canadian medical residency application will look like and all of the different sections on it. Now, when you sign on to your CARMS account, there are four different sections with different subheadings as well. The first one that you'll see is a tab for my information, and this is the majority of what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. The first section for your profile, you'll have personal information. Those will be things like your social insurance number and your medical identification number. Then you'll have your language skills. So those are languages that you read, write, speak fluently. And then things like licensure. If you've ever previously been licensed as a physician in another country before, as an example. Next for education, you'll have a site for non-medical education, medical education, undergraduate clerkship electives, which are very, very important when you are applying for the R1 match, postgraduate training, internships, residency electives, non-clinical training. These are more applicable for matches outside of the R1 match. If you are an internal medicine doctor, for example, that are applying for a subspecialty, uh, the next section will be for examinations. So these are things like if you've written the USMLE as an American student, for example, uh, any transfers on physician supply, uh, language proficiency. So if you are applying to some of the French based programs or if you are coming from out of country and need to prove your language proficiency and then certifications as well. If you've done anything like ACLS and, and, and various other uh, certification programs. Finally, for the experience section, this is the section that looks very, very similar for a lot of students who have applied to medical school before using the OMSAS, the O-M-S-A-S -S, uh, application service before. Different categories here are previous work experience, scholarly activities, research, volunteer experience, clinical practice, fellowships, 
publications and presentations, achievements and interest. Once again, for this section, you're going to see that not all of these things are things that you could fill in if you are applying to the R1 match. For example, the majority of students applying for the R1 match are not going to have anything to put in under the fellowship bracket. For the next section, this is going to be entitled My Documents. Things here, you're going to include personal letters, reference requests. Personal letters are basically just your letters that you are submitting when you apply to the different schools. They will ask you to do different essays and things like that. They will be different for all of the programs that you need to apply to. And this is why it takes so long for people to fill out their residency applications. It's about 50 hours of sit down work if you are applying to 25 different programs uh, from what I've heard and from what I'm seeing right now because the essays for the different schools, while there is some overlap, they do tend to be substantially different in most cases. Then things like document tracking here, this will be when your school has to send your transcript into the CARMS application. You can see to make sure they've received it on time before certain deadlines. Otherwise you freak out and need to call your school and get that all figured out, which we're hoping is not going to happen when we apply. Finally, in the next bracket, which is currently not even open, this is your application when you actually start to fill everything in and submit uh, rank order lists, how you rank the different programs. This will all be stuff after interview uh, and you can see your interview offer status there. And then finally, eventually when the process is all said and done, you move over into my results on match day, which for this year will be April 12, 2022. And once you get that letter, then, uh, then that's it. You've wrapped up medical school. You are ready to start residency. You just have to do your licensing exam after that. Then you get uh, a few weeks. I think it's two or three weeks off before you start work as a full-time medical resident, as a doctor on July 1st, 2022. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I feel like I've done well and good to talk your head off for one day. I have no idea how long this video ended up going, but I hope it helped. I hope that the timestamps were efficient. You could skip ahead to whatever you needed to see. But other than that, best of luck at whatever stage in the application process you're at. Best of luck if you're a medical student, if you're a high school student, you just want to know about this stuff in advance. Good on you for looking into it. Best of luck to my fellow classmates and to myself that are currently filling out uh, this application. I'd really appreciate it if anyone wants to leave some good luck comments in the comment section below. Uh, but with that, we will see you all in the next one. Everyone have a great day and uh, take care.